tailgating excitement building back at home for the Iowa Hawkeyes after two straight Big Ten road losses. To become bowl eligible today, they'll have to stop the nation's leading rusher, Garrett Wolf, and Northern Illinois. Kickoff in minutes. For now, back to Mike Gleason. Thanks, Clay, and welcome back inside Sports Center. You, John Cooper, the former Buckeye head coach, co-piloting the ship once again. And we have yet another full day of college action. Now, here's what to watch for. After we leave Kinnick Stadium, we'll head for Chapel Hill. Wake Forest hopes to climb to 7-1. Jim Grobe, 18-5 overall against his in-state rivals. It's going to be interesting to see how the Tar Heels respond to hearing John Bunting won't be their coach again next year. And at 7 o'clock tonight, we head for Little Rock, Arkansas. It's going to Home game for Louisiana Monroe, but it won't be an easy one, Coach. I like this Arkansas football team. They bounce, bounce, bounce back from the early season loss to USC. They're leading the SEC in rushing. They can throw it. A freshman quarterback. They've got one of the best running backs, Derek McFadden, in the, in the Southeastern Conference. Arkansas, 19 overall in Little Rock. And finally, tonight we cap off another full day. The Battle of Alabama. Alabama State, Alabama A&M. It's only fitting Legion Field provides the stage for this one. That's 11-plus hours of college football because... ESPNU is sports, and it all starts right now. Game one from Iowa City, Garrett Wolf in Northern Illinois against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Here's Clay Mathick and former LSU Tiger, Brian Kinchin. Guys? All right, Mike, and welcome to ESPNU College Football, presented by Allstate. Today, the MAC and the Big Ten collide here in Iowa City. The Huskies of Northern Illinois and the slumping. Iowa Hawkeyes. Hi again, everybody, and welcome to Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City. Alongside my partner, Brian Kinchin, I'm Clay Mathick. You know, two weeks ago, Garrett Wolf was a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. But Western Michigan and Temple cooled his heels. Still, Iowa needs to be concerned with this little guy. Well, the question is, has the secret to stopping Garrett Wolf been revealed? The last two weeks, you'd think so. Only 70 yards running the football, which pale in comparison to his early season performances putting up record numbers and captivating the country with his performance. So the question is, which Garrett Wolf do we see today? Which one shows up? And even more so, does the Hawkeye defense have anything to say about it? Well, the Iowa Hawkeyes have lost two straight games on the road in the Big Ten, and now they've also lost their starting quarterback, Drew Tate, to a hand injury. Well, the coaches had two choices at the start of this week. They had Jason Manson, the older five-year senior, who's more experienced. He knows the offense well. The young Jake Christensen, who's a freshman, unproven, and is not as experienced, but is the future of the Hawkeye offense. Which one was the right choice was the question earlier in the week, but we have just found out they have solved that riddle. And the young Jake Christensen, the freshman, will get the nod. But don't be surprised, Clay, if we see Manson coming in if things don't go right early. A great day for football here in the Hawkeye State. Temperatures in the low 40s, partly sunny skies, some light winds, at least down on the field. This is the 22nd straight sellout here at Kinnick Stadium. Newly renovated this season. $90 million went into this renovation. This place is absolutely beautiful. Last non-conference game for both teams this season. And as usual, Iowa will receive to start the football game. Iowa has started on offense in 80 of the last 88 games now, and uh, no change here today. I'm going to have a holder because of the swirling winds down on the field. I said the winds are uh, fairly light, but they're down the surface here today. And we're underway here in Iowa City as Chris Mendick sends it through the back of the end zone and the Hawkeyes will start first down and 10 from the 20-yard line. And we talked a little bit about Drake Christensen, a redshirt freshman. And they are really high on this guy here in Iowa City. Six foot one, 205 pounds out of Lockport, Illinois. He is a southpaw. And he is making his first start today. So the lefty brings him up to the line for the first play of this football game. Albert Young back in the backfield. Good to see him back there for the Iowa Hawkeyes. He's been banged up a little bit, and he's going to get the first carry of this contest. He's out into the 20, and it's going to be a short pickup, two yards. And again, Albert Young back in the backfield. Scott Chandler is one of the nation's best tight ends. He leads all Iowa receivers with four touchdowns. The Hawkeyes battled a lot of injuries, and that includes the offensive line, but Mike Elgin, the right guard, he has been a constant for the Hawkeyes, and he is the leader up front. 
Second down, eight to go. First series of the football game. Send a man in motion. It's Andy Brodell. And they hand off again one more time. Albert Young plucks his way to the 25-yard line. Northern Illinois on defense, right end. Larry English is the Huskies' best pass rusher. Ken West is the only senior up front. The linebackers, Keenan Blaylark, Tim McCarthy, and Corey Hansen. Blaylark is the team's leader in tackles. In the secondary, Utchik is the free safety and a captain. Hansbro has been a starter since 2003. So a third down and five. We'll see if the Hawkeyes can convert here on this first series. Just underway at Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City. Jake Christensen's going to throw for the first time. Goes over to the middle to his tight end. It's bobbled and picked off. Intercepted by Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker. And a big break for the Northern Illinois Huskies. Early in this football game, their goal coming in was to create at least three turnovers in this contest, Brian. There's one. Well, they did not want to put Christensen in situations where he's going to have to throw the football. That's why we saw them run the ball early in the ball game. It was only about a third and six, a little bit of a high throw. Still, nonetheless, Chandler should come down with that throw, knowing that it's coming from the rookie, the young guy, and it might not be a perfect ball. So Phil Horvath and company take over first down and 10 at the 35 of Iowa. They pass on first down, and it's going to be short of the first down. And the catch made by the tight end, Brandon Davis. Well, he's one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the country. He's completed 61% of his passes coming in. And when opponents try to shut down Garrett Wolf, Horvath takes advantage, as he did last week at Temple. 253 yards and two touchdowns through the air. Pickup of eight on that catch by Brandon Davis. Second down and two. Horvath turns, hands off to Garrett Wolf. He is nifty in the back. And he is going to be close to a first down. Horvath does a good job getting a lot of people involved in this offense of the receivers. Britt Davis would qualify as a go-to guy. On the defensive line, left tackle Doug Free hasn't missed a start in his career. He's got NFL written all over him. We're going to probably be talking about the tackle for the Huskies a lot here. Picked up just a yard. So third down and one. Cobb getting behind the Hawkeyes, looking for a stop here on defense. Back to Wolf, and he was going to be stopped from the backfield. Mike Humpel, the outside linebacker, stepping up and making a big tackle. And then Iowa defense missing all Big Ten defensive end Kenny Owebama today, bothered by a shoulder injury. So Alex Kanellis making his second straight start. The linebacking core, we just saw Humpel, Klinkenborg, and Miles also back there. Klinkenborg, the top tackler. In the secondary, Marcus Pascal, one of the best free safeties in the country, yet he's been slowed by a bad hamstring. They're going to go for it on fourth down. It's fourth and three. They need to get to the 25. Horvath, quick drop throws. Had a receiver, but it was dropped by Britt Davis. And so the Hawkeyes hold after the turnover, and they'll get the ball back. 11.47 to go, opening quarter. Still no score. Can I get a little help around here? Do you believe matching starter sweatshirts can help motivate your family? We do too. Never seen this place so clean. Starter, believe in it, baby. DR changed care forever with the DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum. And now we've done it again with the new self propelled walk behind DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum. Perfect for smaller properties, this powerful machine vacuums leaves, grass clippings, pine needles, acorns, everything. The AccuVac intake is adjustable on the fly, so even thick layers of leaves don't clog. Our optional vacuum hose is great for cleaning around all those hard-to-reach places. So creating a beautiful lawn has never been easier. Do it right, the DR way, with a DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum. Try out a DR Leaf and Lawn Vacuum for six months risk-free. Call 1-800-716-5171 for your free catalog and DVD on the complete line of DR Leaf and Lawn Vacs. That's 1-800-716-5171. 
online at drleafpack.com. DR is professional power for homeowners. Presented by Best Buy, Minnesota, Ohio State, Miami, Georgia Tech, or other regional action. Today at 3.30 Eastern, college football lives here. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Back at Kinnick Stadium here in Iowa City, Northern Illinois, given a glorious opportunity early to take possession at the 35 after the interception but go four and out. They went for it on fourth down, and the Hawkeyes stoned it. So here's Jake Christian, the pass on first down, looking for tight end Scott Chandler. And they hook up at the 34-yard line. It's going to be short of the first down, but Chandler is a good tight end, a senior out of South Lake, Texas, uh, the team's most consistent receiver. Well, I like to see this early. A tight end is a security blanket for any quarterback a young quarterback and they've gone to him really good throw and even a better catch by Chandler throwing some, showing some finesse in some of his earlier wide receiver days second down and four Christensen turns and hands off this is going to be a first down for Albert Young he led the Big Ten in rushing yards last year but this year it has been tough for him he missed the Purdue and Indiana games completely because of a sprained knee and played sparingly last week in Michigan, seven carries for 17 yards. But here, a fresh four for the Hawkeyes after the first down. We we'll look at the keys to the game. Harbath has to be able to move the football down the field. There, for Northern Iowa, has to take a risk. Young for Iowa needs to be able to move the football to relieve pressure off of Hutchinson and Wolf. They need to contain him. Iowa does keeping him inside of the tackles. Dominique Douglas. The freshman wide receiver lined up to the near side, but they go back to the ground. It's Young again. Gets out to midfield. And then Mark Ryder, the uh, strong safety for Northern Illinois, wraps him up. But it's a good pickup on first down for Young. Well, Clay, this is what we're going to see all day long. Albert Young back in this ballgame, his first start in a while. He is going to be the key. They will stick with him to neutralize this Northern Illinois defense and try to relieve pressure off of Christian make throws that he does not have to make. And of course, on that first series, Christensen was intercepted. Been effective here so far in this series, going on the ground. Herb Grigsby in motion, now Christensen. Hands off again to his uh, junior running back, Albert Young. And he's got an up again for the first down. Tim McCarthy, the middle linebacker, knocks him down. But Young, just a solid tailback. He had eight 100-yard rushing games last year, including seven in a row, which was an Iowa record, but none this year. They think he might be able to get 100 yards here today. Well, he's their best every down back. Watching him last week, he was tiptoeing around a little bit versus Michigan and getting the ball down hill. We're seeing him do that today in this ballgame. 345 yards on the ground coming into this game here today. Play action pass. Christensen coming to the near sideline, had a receiver wide open, Herb, Gri Herb Grigsby. But it was out of his reach. A little bit strong from Jake Christensen. And certainly he's feeling some butterflies here today, Brian. Well, the touch throw is a very, very difficult throw for any And then you take a young kid like Christensen who's put into a ball game trying to throw the ball. Throws up the rainbow. Pretty good job. Looked like a good throw. Just a hair out of the reach of Grigsby on the play. Well, Christensen said he didn't treat this week any different than he has any week this season. He, he prepared the same way. But when he found out he was starting, you knew that he had to immediately start feeling butterflies. Five-step drop. Comes underneath to Young. Trying to use his defenders in front as a screen. Out over the 40-yard line to the 38. Mike Jones was the lead blocker, the left guard out in front of Young. But it's going to bring up third and about five. Well, that's a better, that's a better type of throw for him. A short screen. I love the screen. It does a great job of getting him confident. 
couple of nice blocks here not as much out of it as they would have liked but going back to the butterfly theory every player feels butterflies it's just a given more so obviously when you haven't played but once that game kicks off even for a quarterback they're gone and it's time to play football Tom Bush the fullback is the lone setback behind Christensen here we got a third and five just over nine minutes to go in the first quarter and Christensen backs away and calls a timeout and this is something we may see here today occasional confusion all right let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason has a sports center you in game update play Michigan the scores first against Northwestern the eighth time in nine games the in Missouri play and here it's 17 7 Iowa on top Northern Illinois with a big third down and 10 situation as you see the yards Northern Illinois has turned it up here in the second half they go to Garrett Wolf and the run is going to bring him out to about the 30 yard line well short of the first down well look there's like a flag down they got really lucky on that play looks like it might be a face mask the Northern Illinois coaches were very very excited but my question is what kind of a call was that on third and ten Garrett Wolf has not ran the ball well all day Personal foul, pulling the face mask, defense number 47. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run with an automatic first down. Kirk Ferentz upset. That's a big play you give up to Northern Illinois. That was one of the least penalized teams in the country last year. But Iowa's had more penalties this season, and this is a big mistake. Keeping this drive alive for Northern Illinois at a critical time. Well, I still just don't understand the call, and you can't count on a face mask, obviously, to get you to the first down, but third and ten and running Garrett Wolf to the left. I don't understand that. Bad pass. That was high and behind the intended receiver, Brandon Davis. And Horvath, who has been very accurate throughout his career, and 61% this season coming into the game, has had, I would say, a bad day throwing the football. <laughs> bad day. I think that, that sums it up. Last year, he was 71%. He was number one in the country in his accuracy. That's just not how he throws the football. He is rattled for some reason today. Wolf is the lone setback. They are going to run. Trying to navigate through that defensive front four can't really do it Ryan Bain is there and it's going to bring up third down and about eight but I go back to Western Michigan when they shut down the running game and they did not expect it and Harbath had to start throwing the football he just looked out of sync in that game like they didn't expect them to shut down Garrett Wolf and he didn't know that he was going to have to put the ball down the field and it looks very similar to what he's doing today it's like he does not want the responsibility of having to carry this offense Third and a long seven. Horvath, five-step drop, looking downfield. Sets, throws, has Davis, but he's met immediately. Stepping up is Pascal to make the stop. Bradley Fletcher there. We got but another there are penalty flags down. Another flag on the play. This might be against Iowa again. Illegal contact. Wow. Defense number 47. And it's on. First They're going to call this on Mitch King, the defensive tackle for a helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. Well, this is a call that I'm not real sure that I agree with. I just, it's very, very difficult to control where your helmet goes. And if you watch, it didn't even seem like it got there. Brian Madison doing a great job of trying to get to him. Actually, it was Madison with the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. It doesn't even look like he did. They made a mistake on the call. Here's another look. And this might be under review because every play is reviewable. Ah, it was after the fact. It was late. Mitch King, you were right. After the fact, came in with almost like a headbutt. Looked like huh. that, that might have, should have been a, a little more severe penalty than just a flag. Look at the penalties. 54 yards against Iowa now. Wolf nowhere to run on first down and 10. This is going to be a loss on the play. Mitch King making up for it a little bit there. Well, it's a loss of two yards. He needs to step up. That was a silly, silly mistake. You just cannot do that. You're breathing life into an offense by doing something silly like that. But watch this kid. He is a very, very explosive guy. Gets off of blocks really, really well and was not penciled in as a starter until later today when he got the nod because he's not been healthy. Well, he missed the last couple of games. Leg injury. From the shotgun. Horvath. Batted down at the line. 
Uh, Madison and King have been vicious on this uh, series. Well, he was he was kind of running for his life. He it was all closing in on him, and he had to get rid of that football. And what a great awareness. If you're getting beat and you can't make progress getting to the quarterback, what do you do? You stick your hand up and you jump. He could have caught it had he been a little bit more aware. It would have been tough. But, man, what a good play by Madison, the awareness of when he's throwing that football. Madison is the defensive uh, line coach at Florida, his dad, Greg. And it brings up third down and 12. It's going to be close to a first down for Greg Turner. Hasn't caught a pass all day. And uh, if he's got enough for a first down, it's going to be a huge catch. Well, it's going to all depend upon the mark. Very, very close. But obviously, I don't think it's relevant. They are going to go for it on fourth down. I cannot see them <laughs> trying a field goal from this distance. It's going to be... Where are you going to measure it? Surprising, it's very close. So it's going to bring up fourth and about a half yard. Horvath sends the man in motion. This could be the ball game. Play clock down to one. Horvath keeps, and it looks like he's got it. Well, I tell you, you could have missed that had you not looked closely because they were trying to draw them off sides, and it was a play that you call where you try to get them. But if you can't, all he does is simply goose the, goose the center, and they try to get it sneaking the quarterback, and they did it. Good job. Horvath hopes to get a shot in the NFL, Brian, after his college playing days are over. He's a smart quarterback. He's had a difficult day today, but he's got his team on an important drive right now. At the 25-yard line of Iowa, looking to throw. Horvath going to the end zone. Has a man caught. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. What a great catch by Britt Davis in the back of the end zone. Well, just as soon as you count out Horvath, he comes up with a big-time throw. And what a great catch by Britt Davis being aware of where he is, dragging the foot up just like a good wide receiver does and securing the football to get him within three points if they can put this extra point through the upright. Now that play is going to be reviewed. Maybe they're questioning on whether his foot was in bounds or... Well, I think it's more about see. getting the ball secure because he drags his foot up really good here. Nicely gets both of them in. Could have counted in the NFL, but I think it's more a question of was the ball secure? I think they've made the right call here. There's no question. He grabs that ball and sucks it right into his gut. I think that's going to be a touchdown. Yes. Every play is reviewed this year in college football. And uh, some calls have, have gone the way of the opponent for Iowa the last couple of weeks. To say the least. Yeah, Kirk Ferentz was upset with the whole system last week. After review, video evidence confirms the ruling on the field. Touchdown. So the officials get it right. And Northern Illinois could be within three points. As we take a look at the last two drives, 158 yards of offense, a couple of touchdowns. Before that, just 47 yards. In eight possessions, not just plays, folks. That was possessions. An important extra point attempt for Nendick. Spot, kick is up, and it is good. And the Huskies are within a field goal. What a catch by Davis. What a throw by Horvath. And Northern Illinois is right back in it. No curve appeal. Hate the color. Oh, honey, this is it. Oh, what you got there? It's an infestation. A lot of life happens in your car. Conoco, Phillips 66 and 76 quality Pro Clean gasolines help clean your engine as you drive. The paint wasn't so bad. So you can focus on more important things. Conoco, Phillips 66 and 76. Life happens between empty and full.
Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines, Virginia Tech Miami, UCLA Cal, or other regional action. Next Saturday at 8, college football lives here. That's good. Get me in there. There's only one place to be on game day. ESPN College Game Day, built by the Home Depot, Saturdays at 10. My job takes me to water projects in 17 states, but I earned my degree online in just 26 months. I became a more effective teacher, and I earned a promotion. I'm a single mother and a busy professional, but I earned my MBA in just two years. My instructors and classmates were all very experienced. The University of Phoenix is a real-world education. Call 1-800-477-6402. Mike Leeson, Coach Cooper, back at Sports Center. You, Auburn has taken the lead over Ole Miss. Yeah, here's a little pitch, a uh, toss-back sweep. Good blocking by the tight end, offensive right tackle. The old off-tackle play on the goal line. That's Brad Lester taking it in for the Tigers, so it's now 14-10. And check out the game in Camp Randall. Illinois had the big lead. Wisconsin's coming back. It's now 24-20. Badgers trailing by only four. Play. Well, it took Auburn a while to heat up. It took Wisconsin a while to get some traction. Same thing for Northern Illinois here today in Iowa City, but they're back in this football game. Couple of touchdowns. It's 17-14 now. A lot of time on the clock. 8.40 to go. And you take a look at the quarterback, Horvath. What a job he's done rallying the troops. Iowa needs something positive to happen on this possession. Through the end zone, and this is going to be a touchback, and the Hawkeyes have it first down and 10 at the 20. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Jake Christensen, the young redshirt freshman, getting his first college start here today, how he handles the situation now that a lot riding on this series. Well, it's a little bit more different than it was starting this ball game where there wasn't a lot of pressure. Now he's going to have to respond, and even more so, I think Albert Young needs to get involved and be able to move the football on the ground to relieve some of that pressure as we talked about earlier. Backing away from center, turns and hands off to Young. Gets into the secondary, to the 25, good run, and a first down out to the 31-yard line. Hansbro escorted him out of bounds, but a pickup of 11 on first down for Young. And that's well, what they need. Well, we had talked about earlier when Garrett Wolf would get outside, there was always somebody there. They never break containment in, in, in Iowa's defense. But look here at Northern Illinois. There's gaps. There are holes. And he needs to continue to find those as this drive continues. It's young again. Penalty flags down. One short of the 35-yard line, but there are markers on the field. And Iowa has had some trouble with the penalties in the second half. And that's part of the reason that Northern Illinois has been able to get back in this football game. Well, it basically sustained the last Spend drive. The run, holding, offense number 52. At the 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, it remains first down. Here's a look at offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe. Well, and I think it'll be interesting, though, to see how he responds as well because his situation is different now too he can't just free wheel and call whatever he likes he has to think them through just a little bit more than the beginning of this ball game and Christensen doesn't have as much of a command of the offense as a guy like Drew Tate did the southpaw back to throw does finds Boyaki the tight end but he's going to be well short of the first down he stayed in bounds block continues to run well, it wasn't the most perfectly thrown ball, but not a really tight ball, but it got where it needed to go. Very precise throw, though. It hasn't seemed to phase him in the least that he's going to have to be a, a little more precise with the football because one turnover here could cost him the ball game. Pickup of 14, second down and six. Christensen brings him up to the line. Up by three, play clock down to seven. Wanting to throw again, over the middle. Finds Brodell coming across, shakes loose, midfield, to the 40. And pulled down from behind, he gets to the 31-yard line. Andy Brodell, the sophomore out of Ankeny, Iowa. Boy, did the Hawkeyes need that. Well, I tell you what, it was a nice throw, but I think the more interesting thing about the play was that Chandler, who was trailing behind him after the catch, 
kind of hit Mark right, a, right in the back. And technically, a clip, but nobody called it. And it, it went unseen and got another 15 or 20 yards after the run, maybe after the, the catch. Maybe the biggest completion of the day for Christensen. He's going to go to the air again. The play fake. Now he's being chased. Oh, what a big play for Northern Illinois. Larry English, the right defensive end, chased Christensen for about 15 yards, finally got him and pulled him down. Well, I tell you what, Larry English, a guy we have referenced earlier in the first half who has not been very active, haven't seen a lot of him, but does a, there's the bump in the back, a little bit more on the shoulder than I thought. Pretty fair, but a great job, but we watch English here Here's a guy who's very, he's the most athletic guy on defense. He's the biggest surprise for them, as, as the coaching staff will put it, and gets his ninth sack of the year. Second down and 19 after that sack by English. Looking to throw. Over the middle, has a man, it's Chandler. Inside the 20 to the 15-yard line. Mark Ryder, the stop, but not after a pickup of a first down. Boy, I'll tell you what, we talked about Chandler being the go-to guy in big situations. Well, Most of his catches this year have been for first downs. First downs, and you notice that he's kind of gotten away from him. He was his go-to guy earlier in the football game. He's kind of going back to his roots, so to speak, late in the ball game when he really needs the catch to, to come up big. A gain of 24 for Chandler. And now it's first down and 10 at the 16. Boy, a touchdown here for Iowa would be the haymaker. At least you think so. Here's Young picking his way to the 13-yard line. Then he meets Dustin Utchick. Good run on first down. And more importantly for Iowa now, Brian, is that clock continues to move. It does, and that becomes their friend. Even though it's only a three-point lead, it really is irrelevant. The team that's winning the ball game, the clock becomes their friend. And all they care about is getting that time to run off the clock. Points are great, but they're not vital as long as they can get the clock continuing to run and again the biggest Achilles heel for Northern Illinois this season has been the big play that they've given up on defense we've seen some big plays in this drive for Northern or for Iowa here is Young trying to get around the corner on the right side he meets Mark Ryder let's take a look at the storylines that you talked about at the beginning of the broadcast some of the keys to look for the missed field goals by Schluter, key in this ballgame. Garrett Wolf not having a banner day. They've done a good job, Iowa has, of con containing them. Iowa's defense has allowed 175 yards, moving the football. Not great, but haven't been great lately. Christensen chased again. Gets away, look into the end zone, throws. It's going to be incomplete. He was trying to hook up with Chandler in the back of the end zone. Well, that was a big stop for Northern Illinois. It puts them in fourth down, and you know we just got through talking about it. They've missed two very short field goals, and here the missed opportunity. Christensen does a good job of staying alive. He's got Chandler in the back of the end zone, just a hair too much air underneath it, and can't connect. So they're going to look like they're going to stay with their offense and try to go for it. Well, there's Kyle Schlicker, who's missed two field goals today. Missed one from 37 and one from 32. They're going to go for it on fourth and four. Christensen steps up, throws. Touchdown, Chandler. The red shirt freshman with a big test on that series for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and he passes with flying colors. Well, that looked very, very simple, but it was not. Northern Illinois was manned up. And they had their free safety, Dustin Uchik, on the tight end. Chandler, he was he did a really good job of coverage. But again, Christensen, very, very accurate. Put it right where he needed to to get the touchdown. Schlicker on for the extra point now to make it a 10-point game again. And he does. So 14 unanswered points by Northern Illinois. That run stops. And Iowa gets a touchdown to make this 24-14 with under four minutes to play in Iowa City. 
Saturday. Nothing to complain about unless you're working, in which case we hope you're complaining. It's college football day, so that should tide you over. Then try to get home and throw the football around with your friends, your friends' kids, your friends' kids' friends. Then rest up, because there's only two days till Tom Brady faces Brad Johnson as the Patriots battle the Vikings at 8.30. Two days until ESPN Monday Night Football. Now that alone is a reason to smile, even if you're working. Oh, huh, that's funny. The water doesn't work. Neither does the ice dispenser. Point taken. Need a new appliance? The Home Depot can help. Get the latest innovations from brands like LG, Maytag, and GE. And right now, get up to a $200 Home Depot gift card by mail-in rebate with your LG appliance purchase. The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Well, the Iowa offense didn't know what kind of hands it was going to be in today because Drew Tate was out with that ligament damage on his non-throwing hand, so they went with the redshirt freshman, Jake Christensen, today. And he has played well, well especially he, on that last series when they really needed it. Well, he has responded. I think there are a lot of happy Hawkeye coaches on the boundary right now, especially Ken O'Keefe, the offensive coordinator. That, to, to be able to put a kid in this situation and respond the way he did, that's a blessing. Under four minutes to play. Northern Illinois is going to get the ball back here. Marcus Perez. Nice spin move on that far sideline, but steps out of bounds at the 23. Let's go to the studio and Mike Gleason. Well, Clay, the Badgers uh, have taken the lead now. Controversial call, maybe, maybe not. Stocko hooks up with Andy Crooks here. I like this call. A little screen to your fullback over the middle. I like that call. He got those big linemen out in front. Now, did he fumble or did he not fumble? They reviewed or we take another look at it. Now, it looks like his knee is not down. The ball's loose. Goes in the end zone. He jumps on it. So, I think it's a touchdown. Looks like a good call to me, Mike. Blitz coming. I agree. I think that that was a touchdown by looking at that play uh, your thoughts on what you just saw well I, I know there is a rule about the ball moving forward into the end zone off of a fumble and so they might pull it back to where he released it which would have been the one yard line one still yard line. a good situation for wisconsin without question what a game for illinois today giving wisconsin a scare of course it's not over yet oh there's another one of the drop passes we've seen too many times for Northern Illinois today. Britt Davis, usually a sure-handed receiver, should have had that one. Well, he's, a, he's their go-to guy, and Harbath puts it right on the money. And I think he had to be thinking, Marcus Pascal, number 25, sitting right there waiting for me. Breathing down his neck. Short-handed it just a bit, I think. Call that alligator arms. <laughs> oh, yeah. So a big play here for Northern Illinois. They might have to kiss this game goodbye if they don't pick this one up. They're 2 of 13 on third down. Time to throw. Now rolling out of the pocket. Still looking downfield. He's going to run. Caught from behind at the 24-yard line by Ryan Bain. Well, and he, he had Brandon Davis's tight end underneath. The problem was he had only a couple of routes down the football field and had nowhere to go with it. He was trying to get the big chunk of yardage as opposed to getting it underneath and making and letting someone make a play to get the first down. Northern Illinois calling a timeout. Horvath goes over to talk things over with John Bond, the offensive coordinator, in his third year. And we've got another great football game on ESPNU coming up after the conclusion of this one. 24th ranked Wake Forest taking on North Carolina. Battle of the uh, state of North Carolina today. College football presented by Allstate on ESPNU. And then coming up tonight at 7 Eastern, Arkansas at Louisiana Monroe. The Razorbacks trying to stay hot. They're ranked 13th in the nation. And then the 65th, Magic City Classic. And uh, it's Alabama State and Alabama A&M. College football primetime presented by City on ESPNU. That's coming up tonight. And that dog, he was up and running around for a while, but now that the Huskies are 10 points down, he's going back to sleep. You remember his name? 
Victory, Victor E. That's pretty intelligent. I like that. Well, they need a Victor E right here today, and they've got two scores to get it done, and not a whole lot of time on the clock to do it. So on fourth down and eight, Northern Illinois having to go for it. After the timeout, Forvat will step back into the shotgun. Two for three today on fourth down. Boy, they need this one. Horvath hit as he throws, and it's turned over. That's A.J. Eads jumping around down there. It was ruled a fumble. Iowa takes over, and they're going to be able to run the rest of the clock out. Well, Eads, a freshman who got a start a few weeks back versus Purdue, filling in for Mike Humpel, who was injured. Great job on the hit. Harbath trying to get the ball down the field. Might should have just tucked it and ran it. Might have had a chance. That's Eads with the hit. Klinkenborg the recovery. And we're under three minutes to go. Christensen likely just going to hand off, and he does, to Albert Young, who has gone over 100 yards here today for the first time this season. Boy, what a monkey off of his back. Well, it really is to be injured and to be out. I know it's very, very difficult to have to sit and watch and even question your abilities, your skills to be able to get back, and sure enough, comes back with a vengeance, getting 100 yards on the day and helping his Iowa offense control this clock, especially late in this ballgame. They knew they were going to need to run today a good bit with the young quarterback running the offense. They have, and Young has responded. Second down and four. Trying to pick it up on the ground again, Young. Looks like he's going to be Albert short Young of the first down. Forward. Hit by Utchik, who's had a nice game for Northern Illinois. So we take a look at the uh, remaining schedule for the Hawkeyes, and we told you about their goal to win out get to nine wins and get back to a January bowl game. Well, Northwestern and Minnesota certainly look like winnable games, even though the Minnesota game is on the road, but Wisconsin could be tough. They're at home for it. We'll see what happens on November 11th when the Badgers come to Iowa City. Third down and one. We'll have to pick up the first down here. Keep running that clock. Christensen lost the football, turned back over to the Huskies. Adriel Hansbro recovers. Well, again, we see Larry English in constant pursuit, not giving Christensen any time to breathe. Hold on, wait a second. The official has called an incomplete pass. Let's take another look. Well, he tried to flick it out there, but English, you got to give credit. Wow, I don't know. That looked like a fumble to me. Wow, they, they need to review that one. That was a fumble, folks. There's no way, shape, or form about it. That's a fumble. And let's see if they get this one right. Because that was pretty clear cut as we get another look at it from the front end. That ball is loose. That's just a bad call. Hopefully they'll get it right in the, the ruling replay booth. On the field is being challenged by the head coach of Northern Illinois that the pass was incomplete. So Novak has challenged this play. You only get one a game, and I think that probably was the one he should have called it for because that's going to be their football. Here's another look. There's no way Christensen was trying to throw this football. Well, from our angle, it did. It kind of looked like he was trying to toss it out there, but when you get that front-end look at it, that ball clearly comes straight out of his hands. And, you know, that's the problem with quarterbacks running the football because they're trying to make plays, but you got to tuck it away. Joe Novak got the job at age 51 and was hoping it was going to be his last stop. Had some trouble getting the program turned around. Finally has. He's in his 11th year as head coach. He has challenged this play on the field. They said it was an incomplete pass. Looks like a fumble to us. Joe Novak said to us this week his heart still aches from that last-minute loss to Akron in the MAC title game last year. So close to the school's first MAC championship since 1983. He told us this week he thought his team would need eight wins to get to a bowl game. 
came what? into this one with five. I think you really got to give them credit for fighting back. They had nothing. I mean, nothing going offensively. Garrett Wolf was shut down. Harbath could not get the football down the field. No points on the board as we watched the replay. I think we've seen that enough times. It only took one viewing for us. I don't know how many it's going to take for them. Well, this is part of the thing that Kirk Ferentz was so upset about last week in the Michigan game. Why did it take so long to get the call made on the field? Well, and my point was that if this is something, a drive that Iowa needs, and say it isn't a fumble, we shut down for 10 minutes. The momentum of their offense is shut down. They give Northern Illinois a chance to regroup or the defense a chance to regroup, and it takes away the flow and the momentum of the drive on a clear-cut case of that is this a fumble. There is indisputable video evidence that the ball was fumbled by Iowa. Recovered by Northern Illinois, first and 10 on the 18. Look at the number of plays that have been paired from the football game, about 13 combined. And I don't, I don't know, if you're going to take 10 minutes to make a call on the field, why not just, just make the officials accountable down on the field and give the plays back to the players? That's why they come to college, to play football. I agree 100%. And the, the time that you're saving by running the clock on the kickoffs and the change of possession, you're losing it with the replay. Well, I don't mind the replay, but let's, let's make it consistent and let's hurry it up. It shouldn't take this long. A minute 25 to go. Northern Illinois does have the football. We'll say this. The officials did get it right after the review. Yes, positive. That's a good thing. You like to see it working right. I think that's the issue is a lot of times it, it doesn't. And, and now Northern Illinois wants to call timeout. Timeout. Yes. Joe Novak has called a timeout. One thing that has been affected by the replay and by the uh, less time on the clock because of how they start the play on the kickoff and the fewer plays in the game, there, there aren't as many 100-yard rushers. We said Albert Young had eight last season. Even well, this year's just one now after today. That, that's a phenomenal stat to me, that half of them cut in half from last year. Now, granted, I was talking about it before the broadcast. I don't know that you can attribute all of that to a shorter game, but certainly a large majority of them can be attributed to the shorter games, the less plays at six and a half per offense, which is less. I can understand wanting to expedite the process of the game, get, get this into a three-hour package. That's, that's okay with me, but I don't necessarily know that you do it um, at the expense of things like this. I don't see how having fewer 100-yard rushers is good for college football. Well, I just think that if you if you look at how many times plays have been reviewed by coaches, how many challenges that they've had, there is a very, very small percentage, 18% going into this game have been overturned. That's not a whole lot. Look, we see at 109 challenges, only 20 have been reversed. And Joe, Joe Novak just notched it up a few, but yep. that's just not a very good percentage. After the reversal, first down and 10, Northern Illinois. They need to do something and in a hurry. Here is Wolf. Has room to run. Stiff arm out to the 30, to the 35-yard line, and out of bounds at the 36. Boy, that is the Garrett Wolf we have seen many times this season. Not a lot in the first half today, but what a second half he's had. Well, it's almost like a twilight zone because we haven't seen it. And we need to see it more right here, right now. Clock moving again. A minute and 10 seconds to go. Now penalty flags come in. Horvath was in his drop, and flags came in. Now when, when you're in a situation of urgency, you can't have that. Well, especially now that the clock is going to run as soon as they set the football because of an offensive penalty. Clock begins to move. Horvath. Down the middle of the field, tipped, intercepted. Picked off by Mike Humpel. There was concern in Iowa at the start of the season. Who's going to replace Chad Greenway?
Who's going to replace Abdul Hodge at linebacker? Well, guys like Mike Humpel and Mike Klinkenborg have done a nice job taking over, and Humpel with a critical interception here on that tip pass. It was tipped by Matt Kroll at the line. Well, how many times have we seen this? And Harbath is not a small guy. He's 6'3". But they are just being so aware up front of when he's releasing that football. That takes a lot of talent to be able to tip that ball like they've done all game long. Christensen is going to take a knee here. 40 seconds to go. And the Iowa Hawkeyes are going to become bowl eligible after this win. It wasn't easy, especially in the second half, as Northern Illinois scored 14 answered to come back in. Well, I think for me, I know for the coaches on the Hawkeye side are very excited to be able to see a young quarterback who, as I said in the open, will be the future of this offense, perform so well in his first collegiate start against a quality ball club. Northern Illinois has called their last timeout, so they're not going to be able to stop the clock from here on out, 35 seconds to go. And also important for Iowa, they stop a two-game losing streak. Certainly the most surprising loss of the season uh, for, for any team in the Big Ten was that loss to Indiana a couple of weeks ago. No shame in losing to Michigan right. last week, but they get things turned around with what a win about here today. The, having to play the number one and number two team in the country, who has to do that? Iowa had to do that and played them very, very well. Kirk Ferentz said that those two games that he put his head on the pillow slept really well. The only one he didn't know, obviously the Iowa game, which should not have happened. But he did give them a lot of credit for playing a good game. Christensen, another knee, and that's going to do it. As the Iowa Hawkeyes are eligible now for a bowl game, but they're thinking bigger than that. They want to win out. They want to get to nine victories and get back to a January bowl game for the fifth straight year. Well, I had mentioned it earlier, there's only one other team that could maybe fall into that category, and that would be USC over the last five years appearing on a January Day Bowl. That is big. That is That says a lot for the program, a lot for Coach Ferentz and his staff. Jake Christensen gets his first college start. Here today gets his first collegiate victory. Good second half by Northern Illinois, but it goes for not as they drop to five and four. As we take a look at the Big Ten standings, Iowa now at the win, now to six and three. And still got Wisconsin ahead. They've got Minnesota ahead. They've also got a game coming up against Northwestern. That'll be next week. Well, just a, a quality field there of teams. There's not, there's very, very few that aren't playing well this year. Iowa certainly is one of them that is. Now, once again, the final score, Iowa 24, Northern Illinois 14. Coming up next on ESPNU at Sports Center U. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Brian Kinchin and our entire crew, I'm Clay Mappick. So long from Iowa City. For now, let's go to Mike Leeson and John Cooper.